Welcome to Business Spotlight, where we share insights, reflections, and pearls of wisdom from local business owners. My name is Kerry James. I'm a business coach and facilitator. And today we welcome to Business Spotlight from, let me just get this right, Hampson Natton Williams. Uh, right. Martin Williams, welcome. How are you today, Martin? Okay, I'm very well, thank you. Good to be here. Nice to see Excellent. you. Excellent. Let's get stuck straight in, if we may, please, Martin. Give us a little background, a little bit of a history and an overview of HNW. And what, what are you focusing on? What do you specialise in, please? Okay, um, to begin at the beginning, um, about four and a half years in, uh, about four and a half years, we've been together, three successful uh, Manchester-based freelance copywriters. And we used to meet up, as you do, birds of a feather and all that, and uh, moan about the same things. Um, and we had this revelation really we thought to ourselves wouldn't you know wouldn't this be better if we combine forces increase capacity a, a, a breadth of skill sets um a whole, you know, a whole host of benefits so we got together yeah about four and a half years ago um we're a uh, message first is our mantra um we um passionate about uh copy and getting the message right uh we focused a lot on brand tone of voice it's a real big starting point for us with a lot of clients. Um, we do a lot of a variety of sectors. We tend to do a lot of tech for some reasons, ended up like that, which is great. Um, yeah, that's pretty much our origins. And what about, you mentioned clients. What might be your ideal client in terms of um, what their challenges are or the culture of the business or where their brand is? What what might be a typical or ideal client for you, Martin? Yeah, it's, it's a client... <laughs> In the process of reflection and about to undertake change really so they'll be launching a new product or a new campaign or um wanting to rebrand um we get heavily involved in that because the message is you know essential component of, of that it's just not all pixels and pantones and you know design um we work very closely with designers to uh to work on on, on, the, on the brand aspects of businesses so change is 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 you know, is a, is a, is a point at which we uh, get involved in a lot of businesses. Um, agencies as well, we do a lot of work with agencies who don't necessarily have the capacity or the skill set in-house to um, to look after their clients when it comes to their sort of copy and their messaging. So um, they'll bring us in for, you know, for some in-house outsourced expertise kind of thing. Got you. Okay. And in terms of why your clients would choose you compared to competitors, how might you kind of position yourself in that scenario yeah. yeah um for a variety of reasons really um experience um like i mentioned the breadth of the skill sets we offer um and, and sort of processes really there's a lot of freelance copywriters out there and a lot of them do a great job um but when you're just dealing with a single person it's um you end up with best opinion copy uh we run a process called, we call triple strength and someone will lead the project assisted by one of the other partners. And the third partner will be sort of um, kept away from it, isolated. Um, and, and they will offer a um, sort of in, in, impartial, um, objective viewpoint on the work that's going. We give, obviously brief them before before they check it. And it's, it's, it's just rigor, really. There's three spares of eyes on it. It's a peer review process we do. We find that... that um, that just gets better results it's, it's best practice not best opinion okay very good and i'm intrigued martin you know it's it's uh come to the forefront of the last maybe four to six weeks only all this news about chat gpt and there's other <laughs> tools jasper etc oh, yes. getting the um ai stroke knowledge of the internet to write your content and your copy for you It'd be great yeah. to get your um perspective on that and and yeah. and how you would position yourselves against people who are kind of tempted to to move in that direction? Yeah, um, it's an interesting one. It's um, there's, there's certainly aspects of, of of what we do that it can be a great tool, um, ideation and, and bits and pieces of that. But if if you're looking for actual client facing persuasive copywriting, I think you're looking in the wrong place with ChatGPT. I mean. It's, I mean, we, there's a lot of talk in the industry about it and you know, various people feeling threatened or, you know, ambivalent towards it, whatever, a lot of opinions on it. It doesn't really impact on the kind of work we do. Our work is very much client facing. 
there is an industry already that exists. You can you can you know you can send your work out to content mills or people in India or the Philippines. Go to Fiverr.com and have your copy written. And that's a different industry to the one we're in. We're in. We have close relationship with our clients. We work very very hard on uh, voice of customer and brand tone of voice and the sort of the more telling, the more important aspects of of messaging really. Right. Um, uh and chat gpt and all those kind of things yeah it's great it's a great tool but i you know it's 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 not horses for courses really it's not comparable um so i'm i don't feel um i ran a i ran a question i asked chat gpt to give me the roi of brand turner voice for, for brands brands who use it compared to brands who don't and it came up with these figures 23 percent better roi 17% longer customer retention rates and customer lifetime values of 44%. And I thought, this is gold dust. This is genius. I'm going to use this. I'm going to, you know, tell everyone. <laughs> I, look, I said, give me the URLs, please, and the sources. And it, it came up with it all. And I clicked on them. <laughs> they were dead links. And and I Googled, the, yeah, Googled like crazy to try and find sources for this, this information I've been given. Um, the robot and uh no, there, was, there was nothing so it just fed me a load of bull basically it told me what i wanted to hear um so i think yeah it was it was um it's kind of a shame it doesn't it doesn't work as well as it you know it makes sense i think a lot of the time it tells you what, what you want yeah you know, what you want to hear it can it can own it's just growing out and grabbing in information that's out there and if it isn't there and it can't couple it together in a way that looks persuasive and it's not this in this case it was useless yeah it's good to get that good, good to get that perspective on it so you mentioned your industry and changes on the industry and clearly the digital re revolution and chat gpt and all the rest of it is is part of it but clearly we've, we've lived in fairly turbulent times over the last three years mm. or so how have all the changes with uh, interest rates and, and inflation and, and lockdown of course what have been the impact on your industry do you think martin if anything, it's been a really, you know, the more distress there is out there on a, uh, on a commercial level in the economy, the more people have to work, the harder you have to work to get your message across, to be understood, to share, you know, to share your value. Mm -hmm. And there's no better way of doing that than by sharing your your, your value, um, using the right words, really. Um, so copies become that much more important. And I think the chat GPT debate as well how it goes to highlight um the importance of it um the importance of of you know of those relatable truths that you share with your audience and and getting your sharing your value with you know with strong copywriting so from our perspective we've had a really really good couple of years um and we'll make continue because Very for those good. reasons i think it's that much more competitive you need that competitive advantage what better way to do it than with Great copy. And if we think about, or if you think about the global brands that you think do this better than lots of other brands, which would be the standout global brands that people might be familiar with that you think do a fantastic job of their branding, their messaging, their tone mm. of voice, etc. Mm. The classic is Apple, really. Absolutely. Yeah. Fabulous. Consistently brilliant. Um, I've got like Salesforce at the moment. They're doing some nice work and i find it really interesting how they take a sort of you know software bits and bytes and they put these weird little woodland creature avatars with it as well and soften it up a bit there's some nice work there um uh who else classics you know um brew dog you know they built built a business on being bolshy being in your face and they you know to their credit they've done it very very well um and brands who confound expectations are really like as well who well, i guess a bit like salesforce in a way who, who who are playful and and use language in a way that um that isn't necessarily obvious as a, i did a presentation last week there's a, a swiss banking group called hyper swiss and they just they're just great mm. um, no, they are not just more than a bank you know they 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 um, have reacted to the sort of funky, shiny new challenger bank brands, mm. you know, 
with their app speak and all that kind of stuff. And no, it's not. And yes, it's just about your money sort of thing. They double down on the fact they are a bank and they're looking after money and helping people make money is what they do. And that, that's that, that's a really successful. They've been running, running the campaign for a few years now. Takes me back to um, a case study I looked at when I was doing my marketing studies, but was on First Direct. I always thought that was a great, great insight-based mm. brand and campaign, you know, the, the bank for people that hate banking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like I was saying before, is that relatable truth, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. They're saying what people are thinking, and it sort of resonates. So, yeah. Okay, okay, so what about um, what about we've talked a little bit about the industry in general? What specifically about HNW? What would be your main challenges today? Would you say, Martin? Main challenges? Um, <clears throat> our job, our main job, is to find the right customers for us. It's not just about any customer. I think it's about finding. We can't spend our time and energy educating people on the value of great copy yes we do that obviously but there's a there's an element of people have got to see the value themselves already mm. um, experienced how great copy builds those connections and brings people closer and makes them hang around longer and spend more money with you um there's, so there's an element of people needing to get that and and that brand isn't just about pictures and design and colors we love working with designers they're practitioners like us they really care so we love working with designers. So a challenge for us is to speak to people right at the beginning of the brand development process, really. So that messaging is locked in to the design at the beginning. It can be really, really strong combination. Um, so it's finding the right customers, I guess, is our is our challenge. Um, and we seem to be doing pretty well at the moment about that. But obviously, the more the merrier. And yeah. Yes, I completely understand that point about people's different views about brands and some people get it at a very kind of deep level other, others don't how, how do you go about uh, testing or exploring whether you think a potential client gets it and has a similar view on what branding is to to yourselves well i guess it depends what they come to us for the problem solving they come to us with um and 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 the, the the responsibility of the person we're dealing with. Some people will have remit to, you know, to go up as far as you know actual brand fundamentals. Other people will contact us and they'll want some articles or blogs or cases, which is great in its own right. Um, but if, if ideally you want someone with the influence, with an ear in, inside the business, and then we can have the conversations about how our work can really really benefit them, if that makes sense. Right. What, what, what sort of questions might you ask them, or what, what? How would you explore that that key question that you said about? Yeah, well, do they, get, do we they get, get it or not? Yeah. So we're brought in a lot. Of, uh, we do a lot of brand tone of voice. We've got a great brand tone of voice workshop. We do, and the conversations in the those brand tone of voice workshops will often uh, often extend much further than how you say what you say, which is your brand tone of voice. You know what we'll sit and watch people have discussions about their positioning and what they want to say. And, um, and then we can, you know, we can ask further and, you know, find, and start to explore those areas because often, often they haven't necessarily been thought through to the extent they might have been. So we can sort of take it back upstream a little bit to the more brand positioning type thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so moving on towards looking towards the future then, Martin, what would you say your main aspirations are for, for the agency for HNW? Yeah, main aspirations, <clears throat> do great work for great clients, I think are our two main aspirations. Um, consolidate our reputation for brand and tone of voice, extend it into um, um, the brand positioning and the brand actual branding side of businesses and continue doing great 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 fulfillment the great writing the words um at the end of the day was what it was down to so continue to do to do that to follow through the whole sort of life cycle of a message got you okay so martin you started off by telling us a little bit about the the history and how you came together um, four and a half years ago what would you say are the main lessons you've learned and what advice would you give yourself 
Uh, now that you've had four and a half years of experience as a as a business owner as opposed to a freelancer, what are the main lessons have you learned? Do you think, Martin? Yeah, I reckon. Um, uh, that you can't do everything by yourself. It's to trust and rely on other people's abilities and have the modesty. <laughs> Um, to to listen to them and reflect on them and build a better thing together. Um, we're all particularly skilled at, you know, we've all got different skill sets and the challenge for any successful business, I think, is to, is to, is to blend that range of skill sets together to to um, to make a whole that's greater than the sum of its parts. So, yeah, I think collaboration, teamwork um, and parking your ego sometimes for the greater good i think it's a probably a... parking your ego so that's that's an in, interesting thought there martin are there particular <clears throat> experiences or well i mean writing's a subjective lessons. business a lot of the time there's a, a lot of subjectivity to it so you might have come up with something or a, a you know a colleague might come up with something you think this nails it and and you get tested and challenged and you have to justify and sometimes you think actually that creaks that's creaking it's a bit frayed around the edges okay i'll go back and rework it and that's not a person that's not a, that's nothing personal it's a professional you're getting professional input um and so yeah i, I think the three of us we're making each other much better writers for that kind of challenge and test and rigor that we apply to each other and i think that's that's you know, partly by the well when it comes to coaching, we talk about the idea of committing ego side because it's uh, it's all yeah, about the person you're coaching as opposed to the coach, of course. So, uh, yeah, and we have to do it for our businesses as well, for our clients, because you know, a very valuable contribution we make is objectivity to to businesses, mm -hmm. and so we can see things that other people can't necessarily see sometimes, um, and that's very very valuable. Um, Absolutely. But, it's their business at the end of the day. They're the client and um, we can make our arguments and make our points clearly, but, it, but, it, but it's their business. We get offer our best advice and our, you know, the best input. So yeah, there's that side of it as well. You, you know, you should be respectful. Yeah, it reminds me of the Michael Jordan like coach, some, some Michael Jordan quote, sorry. Um, I think somebody said to him, you know, you're the best basketball player in the world. Why do you need a coach? He said, it's very simple. They can see things that I can't. Mm. Yeah, I think it's great value, great value and objectivity. I mean, some of, the biggest, some of the biggest, you know, your Bransons of this world will probably have some sort of mentor, someone they can just get a get an angle or a review from or just, or just a soundboard. So I think that makes perfect sense. Very good. Well, it's been uh, fascinating, Martin. Just to finish off with, are there any... Uh, announcements or invitations or offers you'd like to make to our business spotlight viewers today yeah we do this um sort of messaging audit just a quick quick review uh, sometimes it's really hard to tell whether you know when you're too close like we're talking about objectivity sometimes it's very hard to tell you know whether you should be saying what you're saying whether your message is working as hard as it might and a fresh pair of eyes can really really help with that um big problem we find with with writing and messaging is that it's not bad messaging it's easy to spot if if it's just clunky and you know grinding along and that there's you know if there's grammatical or logical logic failures bad ones you can spot it a mile off the challenge most businesses have in our what well, my opinion certainly is so-so copy mediocre copy that reads okay that is spelt right and is sort of says all the right sort of things mm -hmm. but compare that to good copy you're you're leaving a lot on the table um and because it isn't overtly bad or obviously bad it slips <laughs> under the radar and it hangs around on websites for years or in brochures or wherever any sort of you know these marketing touch points underperforming continually underperforming and it takes a, it takes an experienced eye to be able to say you could be doing better there you really could be doing better there so yeah, so we we run this um, messaging audit, um, quick review of people's uh, 
websites, I think it's probably the easiest way to do it. Mm -hmm. They've got, you know, hard copy collateral as well that we need to look at. We'll do that. And we'll just we'll just give a take on it, really, and just and, and some pointers and have you thought about this? Have you thought about it? again just a bit of object skill objective input? <laughs> Though I say so myself. And what is the offer there? Is that a discount or what's the what's the specific offer there? No, so we'll 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 if anyone wants to reach out to us, happy to take a look. Happy to take a look at uh, if there's something particularly concerning them or they're just unsure if if they could be doing better. More than happy to uh, to take a take a look at their copy and start a conversation. Maybe the conversation won't go anywhere because their copy is amazing, you know. And then um, maybe maybe they just want a bit of advice or guidance or whatever it is. Maybe they're unsure about their brand tone of voice or yeah. Very good. Know. Okay. Well, we'll in include uh, a link to to your website so people can get in touch. Link to to this video on a business spotlight. So, Martin. Thanks so much for your time and your contribution. It's been an absolute pleasure and all the very best with your business. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you.